are live. Welcome to the RG at DFS Tournament Takes Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Kirkwood, here for week 11. We are without the esteemed uh, colleague from Run Pure Sports, uh, JSU, who's on vacation this week. Not vacation. He had something to do in Florida. He's in Florida. His internet wasn't working. So Bobby and I waited around, waited around, waited around, and we just uh, we're doing the show, just us two. He's sorry he can't be with us, but I do have my main man, at Bobby Gomes DFS million dollar winner. Uh, he's ready to uh, win some money this week, week 11, 7 11, lucky number 11. Is this a good week for us? This is actually my favorite week of the year. This is, I shipped the Millie week 11. So ready to okay. love playing week 11s. Yep. Har- harness that, harness that. So, um, all right. So, week 11, the, the things that stand out to me, this slate seems pretty hard to me um so far that's the way i'm looking at it like there's we've got a m- bunch of quarterback plays um i don't know i i didn't even go in there do we have a bunch of quarterback plays well we we're, they're they're available right like okay so yeah i get I, what you're saying yeah so let's i had a good week last week i played justin fields i know you you didn't play i did not I, I know yep. and we had a we had a testy little uh uh he was uh, he was an awful threat. play for me personally. Like I haven't played him, so like why am I going to play him last week? A lot of really good players did not play Fields. Yeah, and a lot of really good players also played Fields. I can go through and we can debate that, but a lot of were very under on Fields. Ricky D zero Fields. Just saying. Yeah, and there's go look at McCullough. probably the best NFL player right now. Go look. There's for every one of those. There's another one. It, it, different. There's plenty of ways to skin a cat. In I was no. I actually had this pulled up. If JSU was on the, I don't want to go into it because JSU is not on the show, so he can't really. JSU played like 97 percent fields, and then yeah. I pulled up a bunch of different. Everyone was either underweight or like full, almost a fade. So, just like, what can you do? So you 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 believe you're right, but I, we won't get into this. I believe Anyways. personally for myself, I'm right. I don't believe like why am I going to chase through, like if I haven't played him in three weeks? Why am I going to play him? It's like in a it's a it's a crazy chase. It it's not a chase. There was four quarterbacks who were even in play last week. There was no quarterbacks last week. There was nobody who had a ceiling. He was one of two quarterbacks that actually had a ceiling that had rushing upside. Yes, he ran like God. Right. Like yeah. it doesn't have to go like that. But it's also like Josh Jacobs chalk when he ran like God. Right. You know what I mean? Like, um, but I think the the conversation about whether he was in play or not is is a complicated one. And there's plenty of I always say this, there's plenty of ways to, to skin a cap. But at the end of the day, you got to score the most points in DFS. So there's things you got to change from week to week, in my opinion. I played Fields on Yahoo. I didn't play Fields on DraftKings. I barely played, and I went down a stupid Why didn't hole. you play him on DraftKings? Uh, I played Russ, like a like a moron. So, but, like, I, why did you think? Because I, I wanted the loan. I wanted the loan. I only played there one. I only played. If, there I only, so, if there weren't so many good pivots, what got you? Because I only, I only played one lineup, and I, yeah. only bar- and I barely played it, and I was looking for the home run with Russ, right? Yeah. Nobody was playing Russ. Did you play the two previous weeks? Did you play Fields with Chalk on DK? No. So that would incentivize you not to play him the third week as well, or you just it's just week to week. No, I take it slate by slate. Yeah. I just feel like that's like the easiest way sometimes. I played Fields on Yahoo and I crushed. And I was the only one who played Fields on Yahoo, at least in like the 10 minutes. Everyone had Mahomes and I played Fields. And and I faded and you know because these these projection slaves they all played Damian Pierce like he was like the greatest play but he's on a shitty team with lot lot le- in a shitty game with a lot less touchdown equity and so my spot was all about fading him and replacing him and so I, I smashed I, I I crushed over there but you know I got lucky with the field outlier but I would have won anyway even if they even if he tied with Mahomes or whatever I still would have I still would have won I had. Because I, I, you were the everybody. only person who played Fields on Yahoo. Yeah, like in the ten mans, but it was different because their their price was kind of yeah. close. Their price was very similar. Um, so the savings, but I did that just so I could get up to Saquon, um, and when yeah, everybody yeah. else was playing Damian Pierce, and then I played the Giants D to uh, against Damian Pierce. You know what I mean? Instead of, uh, so I kind of leveraged that. 
Yeah. And, and it and it worked out. But you know, all these projection slaves, they don't they don't make change. They just sit there with their optimals. Um, but anyways, so this is a new week. We've got 11 games. We've got buys on the Dolphins, so we don't have the Dolphins. We don't have the, the Tyreek and uh, Waddle stack to do. Um, the Jags are off the slate. Seattle's off the slate. Tampa's off the slate. The Titans played the other night. The Packers played the other night. Chiefs are off the slate. The Chargers are off the slate. San Francisco and Arizona are both off the slate. We do have 11 games. We have two games with a 49.5 point total. One is Justin Fields uh, at Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta minus three with a 49 and a half point total. The other is the Browns game Browns at the bills, but really it's at Detroit because they, uh, they left the weather in Buffalo, which was a disaster. And now they get a nice dome. So that, that changes, that was a huge change for the slate, right? Um, then we got one more game that with a higher total Dallas, Minnesota is going to get a lot of love. Um, I, I played that game last week. That was part of it. My uh, yeah, I had Aaron Jones in that game. I think I had CeeDee Lamb in that game. Um, anyways, uh, Dallas minus one and a half points at Minnesota, 48 and a half point total, like I said. Uh, Detroit at New York Giants, minus three, for the 45 total, 45 and a half total with Philly at Indy. So basically what I'm saying with quarterbacks, we have name, we have the studs this week. They may not be in the best spots, but we have them, right? We have Josh Allen in a, in a phenomenal spot because he's in the Dome now, 8,500. We've got Lamar Jackson, um, who's going to be relatively unowned for the most part, it seems, because they're playing Carolina. They're at home. Maybe this is a game people are predicting that they just run the ball, which they like to do. Lamar hasn't had many good games except the first three weeks of the season, right? Like he hasn't really done much of anything since then. Um, we have Jalen Hurts, but it's against the, the Colts. Um, so a lot of people may think that uh, Philly handles that game easily. But, you know, Philly did just come off of this uh, loss to Washington uh, for their first loss. But, you know, he we got rushing studs. We got Justin mm -hmm. Fields, uh, who, you know, the thing the thing about rushing, I mean, look at his, the, the rushing attempts and the rushing yards just since over the last one, two, three four five last six games really but with rushing but really came on 178 yards rushing against miami followed that up with 147 yards rushing and two tds broke the slate last week against detroit um then we've got dak we've got kirk cousins in that game people are some hearing some talk about Mariota. i'm hearing some talk about joe burrow i will never play russell wilson again although the, the Raiders are certainly a good matchup. Um, the Raiders so are like the lead for what's what are the Raiders giving up for fantasy points versus QBs? Uh, they're probably the best matchup on the slate. Um, let me let me pull yeah. it up here. Um, they are the third. They give up the third most fantasy points per game. Detroit gives up the most to quarterbacks. The Dolphins second, and then the then the Raiders are third. Yeah. Yep. So I can't go back to Russ, but maybe someone will. But anyway, so we've, we've that's what I was saying. We have quarterback, but we also have a, a tough slate. So we have a bunch of running back, but we don't have like any screaming value running back plays. I mean, everyone's kind of priced up, right? Like Saquon, phenomenal spot, but he's 8,900 against uh, the Lions. Kamara, um, 7,600. Uh, Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs. Uh, 7,500, 7,400. Then um, who's going to be popular is going to be Damian Pierce again, who I'm fine fading every time, but we'll talk about that. And then there's David Montgomery, who's uh, the leverage spot off of fields, only 6,100 with Herbert going down. He should be the only back in town. They do have that other guy. I think Ebner is or something his name is. Um, but he's more like a, a special teams guy. I don't think – I don't expect him to get much work. I think they'll give it all to David Montgomery. But again, that Ramondre, Jonathan Taylor back from the dead. Strong week last week. And then wide receiver, we have like all these really expensive, great plays. Thin value on the lower end, but you're going to need the lower end to make some builds work, right? And then uh, tight end, people are talking double tight end this week. 
because that's again that's everyone's searching for value so to me this is a tough slate how is it how did how is it to you yeah it's similar right to last week uh wide receiver value isn't the greatest and then basically you have these guys that are priced pretty efficiently at the running back spot uh double tight end was pretty much in play for a good bit good chunk of time till last week just because of the lack of value um, I think it's really just three games, though, those three dome games for me, like the Eagles and the Colts and then Minnesota and the Cowboys and obviously now the Bills and Browns that I'm going to be really focusing on in terms of the slate. Yeah, so, so the one thing that does kind of stick out to me, it's like like the day I played DK when I, I had a bunch of time and I, I had I played my most DK is when I felt really strongly about that slate when – even though they were chalk with the, the Dolphins stack, I just thought that that was going to go off, and it did. I feel like the same the same way this week with you know Josh Allen in a dome coming off coming off of a loss in a crazy game, then a game they never should have lost. He shouldn't have been in that position anyway. They had it won, and that that fumble was just absolutely bananas, right? Um, yeah. Uh, on the goal line, and uh, then the the chalk Minnesota D got there too, just to add insult to injury for everybody. Um, I'm sure, but uh, it probably didn't matter at that point anyway. But uh, but it feels like you, like you just play Josh Allen in this spot. And, yeah, you know, I'm with and, you. And, very, very much so. And my thoughts with Field, like so, Fields is the the one guy right next to him. Um, my thoughts with him is that, well, he got a price increase. It's still a good matchup, but there is always that it could be it could be a David Montgomery game. And we said this last week, like that was the way to play that. And like it doesn't mean it's gonna work. And I remember we did it on the show, like we on uh on Grinders Live, we were talking about the the leverage to just play David Montgomery. That situation is even more in play this week. Except except Fields is not gonna be as chalky, and there's a lot of like um Twitter speak and stuff about people saying they're fading fields. And I, I think fields is going to come in less than what we're expecting, but we're not even expecting a ton of ownership. So I think it'll be kind of spread out. Um, I think a lot of people are off of him this week, which may make it interesting to go back to him. And if he has one of these ceiling games again, but um, anyway, let's start it off at running back um, and go through who we're going to have a running back. And then we'll get back to quarterbacks, give our official plays tied in with the wide receivers tight ends and then uh the bobby gomes dfs defensive segment which you i'm sure you're ready for this week right i think we crushed it last week right what did, what did we say who did we say how did i just keep saying that i don't know if we crushed it but <laughs> I, one of these last two weeks we did well <laughs> I, don't know. Uh, I, think, anyway. I, I have no idea who we had uh anyway okay so let's so from an ownership perspective, I think Damian Pierce is going to be very popular again. He right? should be, right? He's he's well, he's the projection guy, right? Like, so I think he's, he's just the right play though, too. At the same time, I get what you're saying, but I see. I, I disagree with that. I'm more off of Ramondre. That's fine, but there's plenty of options here. Um, yeah. So I, I like Ramondre, but I, if if I had to pick someone to fail in the spot, it would be Ramondre. Just really? because of like the snap counts for running back, they're like JJ Taylor got work. Harris is pretty much back. It's just Jets are a tough D overall. So yeah, I don't know. Sixty seven hundreds steep. What? All right, so let's talk about this. So you say that the Jets are a tough D. Washington is second in DVOA versus the run. Yeah. Pierce. But he's gonna get all the work though. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But he's. The passing game work is not officially his um, lately. Let me pull up the snaps for um, – I think uh, Burkhead has been making a dent in there, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't – I, I don't – Yeah, so he, so he got 72% of the snaps, which is good. Uh, Burkhead, 25%, and then that Peterson. Is, yeah, I guess you're correct. Actually. 13%. Um, he has good usage. He get, I, I get it. So he's averaging 23 touches a game since week three. One of the big negatives with him is he only has four touchdowns on the season, and that's because he plays on a pretty bad offense with a bad quarterback and um, and whatnot. So um, the thing that everyone likes is the usage. 
Um, so he has had a smaller, much smaller target share over the last two weeks, which is a bit concerning because everyone loved him because he because he had that one game where he got the the garbage time touchdown through the air, um, but hasn't really done much since. So to me, this game feels like it's going to be kind of a gross game, and I think he'll do fine, but I don't see a massive ceiling with this guy. I just don't think his offense is good enough to give him a massive ceiling away. So that's why I faded him last week. I thought he was such an easy fade when he was chalk, um, and he's pretty chalky again this week, but I guess you're on the other side of commanders. The- so commanders D line is 10th. Um, and then Houston is Houston's O line is like pretty weak as well. Right. Like, so I guess you get 23rd, so you can make a case for that fade. Uh, That's what I'm saying. He's on a, he's, a, he's on a bad offense Yeah, and he's, and he's playing a team that has a good rushing D. So, that's that's my thought process there, and he's going to be yeah. chalky. So I don't see the ceiling. So to me, I like David Montgomery better than him for in that same range, who's sixty one hundred, um, just because I I feel a lot more comfortable with his increased work workload, and I like the leverage spot off of Fields, and I like the matchup against Atlanta, who's twenty fifth in DVOA versus the run. Atlanta's eighth most fantasy points allowed to running backs. Uh, sixth most rushing TDs. That's an important one. I think he's got touchdown equity. Now, obviously, the caveat here is that the way that Justin Fields is running, he could certainly, and the confidence and and all that, he could certainly bust with like Fields Mm -hmm. getting into the end zone and rushing it himself, Fields potentially passing, although they are not a big passing offense. And then, uh, but it could work out for him well. And I like the matchup. I think the risk is worth it. 6,100, you get some savings. So I like that. Ramondre, I like personally, but I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of by, uh, biased to him uh, just as being a, a Pats fan. I get exactly what you're saying with Harris back. He had a very m- mediocre game last week. He had a re- receiving touchdown, which is nice, but, you know, didn't really do much. And the thing is he did, did, did pretty well the last time they just played the Jets. He did have 16 carries, 71 yards. Um, did have the really thing that stuck out is he had seven receptions for 72 yards, eight targets. Um, it's it's a tough matchup. I get it. You're right. I, the Jets D is underrated and pretty good. Uh, I think we've been on that as a collective group, all of, uh, me, you, and JSU um, throughout the season. The the Jets are 10th in DVOA versus the run. Um, Last two games with Harris playing, he still had 70% of the snaps, 21 touches. So to me, I look at him very similarly to Damian Pierce from a workload standpoint. However, I think the, the Patriots are a better running offense, and there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot more upside potentially, I think, in this game. But, you know, maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. So I think I think you're correct. Like I think you can poke holes in Pierce and you can poke holes in Stevenson. I, I'm on the same page with you. I do think Montgomery Montgomery is the back. Like we're pretty much Montgomery truthers at this point, the two of us. So I have no issue really go taking Montgomery versus that Atlanta defense that hasn't been great versus the run. There's these other two matchups I, I find um to be a little worrisome with these running backs is chalk. And I know running back chalk has kind of hit all year, but I worry about the ceilings of both Stevenson and Pierce. I'll definitely play both of them, but more probably around the field um, than anything else. I think that you can go up a little higher and basically get to like a guy like Kamara or Taylor, uh, both in domes. Kamara really hasn't done well these last two weeks, but the three weeks ago he had the four TD game. Uh, so I, I, I don't hate him. He's probably my favorite running back on the slate. Then you have Saquon at 8,900. Saquon's just in an incredible matchup versus Detroit. Uh, the one thing that is a little bit worrisome about Saquon is he's not in a dome, but it's Detroit, and they're the worst run D in the league. So I don't mind getting up to one of those three in uh, in the majority of my lineups just because I think it'll be differentiated. Uh, when a lot of people try to jam this questionable chalk. And then Montgomery, I think, is just a strong play overall. Um, any pivot plays, like it, like outside of like below 6K that you have interest in? 
Um, well, let's see here. So, I mean, you could make a case for just take, so you could take the other side of Damian Pierce, certainly with Washington, right? It's a much better matchup for for the Redskins on a rushing. Who would you standpoint. prefer between Gibson and Robinson? I think I'd that's the problem. Is everyone's saying Gibson, right? Do I think Gibson is a better back? So it's funny to me. The narrative this season has started out like Gibson, Gibson is trash. He's he's worse than David Montgomery. He's worse than all these people. And now the narrative is Brian Robinson is trash and David Gib Dave, uh, Antonio Gibson is more electric, right? A better and better pass catcher and all of that. But in the last game, in the, their tough matchup against Philly the other night, I mean, it's they're definitely not going away from Brian Robinson. He got 26 rushing attempts, right? Only 86 rushing yards, did have a TD, nothing in the passing game. Very concerning that way. But this is a super strong matchup. Houston 31st in DVOA versus the run. Let me pull up here um, how many TDs they've allowed. Um, one second. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot, but um, yeah, they've given up the most rushing touchdowns uh, in, in the league at 13. So like, this is a spot for one of these guys to have a really good game. And I think it's all, it's completely game strip dependent. And I think Brian Robinson is going to get the first crack at it with the most carries and could certainly fall into the end zone. So, and the narrative is, is that people like uh, Antonio Gibson. So, so this feels, he feels, so Robinson feels like the Damian Harris play. How we, we, we like last season, right? Like we played Damian Harris in good matchups because they're a run heavy team. He's getting the rushing carry and he needs to fall in the end zone. Right. I think that's a super sharp comparison. I also think that if you're, if you're, if you want to be under on Pierce for whatever reason, it makes sense to have Robinson in your pool, right? Yep. Or just and in no, lineups that there isn't Pierce. And no one's going to play. I mean, projecting like under yeah. 5% ownership, people think he's bad. Um, but, you know, if and if Washington plays a good game and they have the lead, which could certainly happen, I think he's the guy. If the game, if Houston has the lead, well, this could go badly for me, right? I think then Pierce could be a great play. And – you know, bringing it back with Gibson could be good in that scenario. So I think if, you know, if people hate to play the double running back, I'm not so opposed to the double running back from the same game. It all depends. It's got to be price dependent, right? And these, and Gibson is only 5,600. If you're convinced, and if you're convinced that Damian Pierce does well in a good game script when they're ahead, I think it makes sense to come back with him or Terry McLaurin for sure, right? Like wide receiver McLaurin's in a great spot, but Gibson will be, you know, low owned but really the way i if i'm fading pierce i would definitely want some brian robinson lineups uh, yeah the way that I, I think that. that's i think that's the way to think about it let's talk I mean, about josh Jacobs. Like, like the favorite like it just kind of works for robinson and he's not getting as much steam as he probably should uh, and they they should be a better team than than houston no i'm definitely in agreement any other running backs like i think miles sanders Somewhat interesting. I don't want to take too many shots there. I but... can't pay sixty nine hundred against. Oh, he's, the Colts. he's up at sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I good. would like to talk about Jacobs. Um, yeah, so, so get into Jacobs because I, I with them trailing. I know Adams is in question now, so just want to hear where you're kind of at. Usually, when they're trailing, we don't want to play him. Correct. So. Correct. Although he does has gotten a lot more passing work. He could also be beating this Broncos team, right? Yes, and I think they can. And so, and also, so Denver is 20th in DVOA versus the run. They were really bad earlier in the season. They they did just who did they just blank? They who did they just play? Um I have no idea. The Titans, um, maybe? Yeah, they just they just uh stuffed uh Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, yep. Yep. Right. So that's gonna give people a lot of pause. But when you know I mean, is it? Do people not remember what he just did to this Denver D back in Week Four? I mean, that was the week he was the week the chalk. I think that was his first chalk week, and he smashed in thirty-seven and a half fantasy points at fifty-five hundred. Yeah. Um, so the thing with him is workload, right? Um, Twenty-one touches, one hundred and thirteen yards average. 
Uh, he did get a season high eight targets last week. I think that's big. Um, he, if you look at him against all other running backs, he's got elite usage on the season. He's got, he comes in at fifth in carries, ninth in, he's like top 10 in everything, fifth in carries, ninth in reception, fourth in receiving yards. Um, and he did have a good game against the Colts last week, um, which was nice to see, but uh, busted the two weeks prior. This offense has been in shambles a little bit, but, you know, they, they may need to lean. I think it's important. So I, how do you, how would you, do you think Devontae Adams plays, a, like, how would you play the situation? Let's say Adams is out. Does that make Jacobs improve like a ton to you? I think it probably hurts him because they're more likely to win with Jacobs with Adams with in. Adams, yeah, and then he probably doesn't see a stacked box. Do we know is that an is that a four p.m. game or? Um, yeah, it's in Denver. Yeah, I think yeah, he he'll might play. get some pretty good news. It'd be nice to get news on Adams. I would say earlier. he's practiced. He's he's questionable, but he's he's had limited practices all week. So I think that I would suspect he plays then, right? Yeah. But they are a train wreck, so you never know right now. I mean, this team has really underperformed. Yeah. Um, all right. Some other – but I, I like Jacobs personally in this spot. Um, we should talk Donald, about Cordero. Pat oh, do you want to get into Taylor? Yeah, let's talk about JT, and then we'll go to Cordero. Yeah. I don't really have anything to say about Cordero, but um, I'll listen to your take on it. But JT, back from the dead. Um, but it was the Raiders. But the, the thing is, is that, you know – what did, what did we expect them to do now with all this, the coaching change and um, Matt Ryan back? I think Matt Ryan back, as sad as it is, it help, obviously helps the offense. Like he still can make throws. He's terrible under pressure. We know that, but um, he's an improvement. So, and we saw he got 20. They just fed him, fed him, fed the rock. 22 carries, 147 yards. He got in the end zone, touchdown, got two targets. I think there's more room for targets based on game script there. But uh, I'm, I'm in on Taylor personally. I think Philly is a tough matchup for sure, but I think it's going to be volume, volume, volume. And uh, and I like his talent level. I'm, I'm fine with him. The offensive line is a little shaky, but um, you know. I don't know. So I'm in there, but Cordero Patterson, I don't really have. I, I tell break it, break him down for me. All right. It sounds like you're in, you're, you're playing some of them. Yeah. The, just because he's not, he's pretty, he's six two. Uh, the Bears have struggled versus running backs. He busted an island game. I think uh, he just makes sense for that reason. And he's going to be low owned relative to the other guys in his range. I know there's, three other backs there, but I don't mind the fact that he busted on an Island game and he does get enough carries. So if he gets, if he has somewhat, I, I just don't love the ceilings of these other guys and that are like in his range. So I think it makes sense to consider him. Uh, not that his, his ceilings elite either, but uh, at the ownership, like I think taking the chance is fine. The Taylor stuff, like you hit on the, like just Saturday, just that whole narrative of him being a line coach, like they're going to try to get the ball to Taylor. Deion Jackson is back this week. So I think that like he would see some snaps, but like you're at home versus Hertz. You would expect that you'd want to get the ball in a Taylor's hands as much as possible. I think Taylor out of the top three um, running backs, like I'd re I think I'd prefer Barkley and Kamara ahead of Taylor. I know they're different. I, I guess for people – if if you're talking like one or the other, seventy six hundred or seventy eight hundred, Taylor and Kamara, I think I'd prefer Kamara. Uh, and the the Philly Rundy is a little bit banged up. Philly Rundy's a little bit banged up, and they had a tough time stopping um, Brian Robinson and company uh, in that game. They didn't look like the the tough. Who do they have team. out? I, I forgot. It's one of their big run stoppers. I forgot his name personally. I'd have to go and pull up. Um, I like like the I like paying up at running back just because yeah these guys offer more of a ceiling I think I mean it's has. Patterson I get it and I get I like I like the matchup I, it does worry me he got out snapped and out touched by Algier um, five rushing attempts that's not going to pay the bills but he does have massive touchdown equity yeah 
So I get it, and things could definitely, and maybe they they make it. I mean, he's definitely the better back. It's just they don't use him a ton. But if they did, and you know, he's got another game back healthy, um, I get that. I, I I could I could have some for GPPs for sure. Um, who else? Who else are we uh, thinking about? Um, so you like Camara? Yeah, I think Camara. Just because people, he's busted his chalk the last two weeks. He's been on a slate. And they're in a dome like that. They're gonna have to utilize them in this. It just seems like a Camara spot. Uh, and I think he's gonna get squeezed between Barkley and uh, Taylor. Um, I'll throw. I'll say that I, I kind of have interest in Dalvin Cook. He just has been quietly getting it done, you know. And I played uh, Aaron Jones against this Dallas D last week. Um, certainly, he had a decent game. Um, I think that's the way to attack them. Everyone's going to be, everyone's going to hate his price. People want to play this game. They're all going to try to do what they can to get Justin Jefferson and come back with CD lamb when Dalvin cook is standing there and certainly could be the guy um, in, in this matchup. This game could go many different ways too. It could, could provide fantasy goal line, but it could be a um, Dallas defense could rise up and be in, you know, shut down this, this offense too. What's crazy to me. I can't believe they're favored. Um, after you know Minnesota seven and one, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. Do you have any interest uh, in Elliott or Pollard? Committee, I'm probably staying away. I, I don't know. Wait, I just yeah, feel no, like no. I know Patterson's in a committee also, but I just feel like I don't know. Yeah, I don't really want either of them. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. Like I don't, much. I don't really like anyone else. I can't see anyone else that I like besides players that we met. I mean, maybe Mixon. The thing well, with Mixon is, like is he going to put fifty-eight again? Game like he's not. I that I feel that seems chasey. Well, the thing is with him is like we had a, they had the buy, so it's like I feel like people forgot about him already. Do you know what I mean? Like he's he's not like if if it was literally the next week. If, if it was like, you know, because he did that in week nine, if it was week 10, he'd be the chalk on the slate right now. He'd be up, but now he's just, he's kind of just in the same range with everybody. There's really not much separation yeah. there. Um, but Pittsburgh is better at uh, stopping the run, the which would lead you to, I think Burrow is probably a really good loan or loan play with like T. Higgins. But, you know, Mixon's workload is insane. So, I mean, if he if he if if he goes off again, like it's not going to shock me, right? No. Nope. Um, all right, I don't like anyone else. So, yeah, we've covered running back. All right, let's move it on over to QB. This is where things get interesting. Um, Justin Fields, seventy six hundred. He's now into like the the just below the elite pricing tier, so he's got a price jump. We have other studs there. So it's getting like it, you know, getting up to Josh Allen is probably preferred at 8,500, but that savings could go a long way. If fields has a good game, you know, this, this, he could just smash again. I mean, it's a great spot. First of all, it's the highest total game, right. With tied with the, the, um, are the bills, the other one there. Yeah. 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 So they're both, they're both the highest total games, these two quarterbacks. So basically Atlanta's allowed the most passing yards, 11th most DK points per game. Since week five, Fields has averaged 100 rushing yards and one rushing TD per game, right? Um, 33 fantasy points per game plus 116 rushing yards over his last four. Uh, only the one thing I, I can't remember where I read this, but I'm going to steal it and say it. It's, it's not coming for me. I didn't I, – I read it somewhere. Um only nine games ever where QBs has rushed for over 140 yards in the in the entire history of the NFL, and he's done it in back to back weeks, right? Um, crazy. Uh, but anyway, since week five, he's second in rushing yards amongst the entire NFL. So he's only behind Derrick Henry. So like this is a running back one now. They have flipped the script switch. Things are clicking. I don't know if Chase – it's not all Chase Claypool, that's for sure, um, that's made this big thing. But he's confident. He's running. He's an explosive runner. Um, 
He's going to be in the dome. He could certainly go off again. I get it. He's going to be chalky. Um, but I haven't projected. He's going to be just as high on as Josh Allen. Uh, they're going to be the same. So do I prefer Josh Allen? Yes, but Fields has to be considered. Um, and uh, you can give your thoughts in a second. The other ones that I think are in play are Josh Allen. Obviously, he's still the man. Like, he's had a bad uh, couple of games, but his bad games come with, like, rushing floor. So he's still great, you know? So, I mean, we're talking about bad games. Three weeks ago was, like, the absolute worst where he scored 19 fantasy points against Green Bay. Followed it up with a bad game for Josh Allen. Sam, it's 26 against the Jets. 86 rushing yards, two rushing TDs. That's a bad game. Um, and then another bad game against Minnesota, 25. So his bad games are elite games for, like, everyone else. Um, so he he's obviously ridiculous. This is a – getting the dome is a massive upgrade. Uh, Cleveland is 36 – uh, no, uh, 26 in DVOA versus the pass, 32nd versus the run. Um, this game – I think Cleveland can can put some points up on this Bills defense. I know they're missing Tremaine Edwards. They're still um, they're missing other key pieces to their defense. So I think their defense is a little bit more susceptible when than it is when they're healthy. So Josh Allen seems like a, a easy easy play, and ownership seems kind of spread out. So it's interesting. It'll be interesting to me to see what like in the single entry high high dollar stuff or the three and three entry max stuff what he comes in at. Because I don't really know what, what he's going to do. I think you're right. Like, you had Allen Hurts, Jackson, Fields, Mariota, Cousins. It's going to be spread out enough to where he put it, probably shouldn't be as high-owned as he should on this slate. Uh, it's a fantastic spot. Like I, it's going to be – I'm going to play a lot of teams with Allen. Um, Lamar Jackson at 8,400, he just hasn't had ceiling games, but – like, I think Andrew great, Andrew's grades out pretty well. I don't think I'm currently playing him right now. Currently, I have Jalen Hurts and Kirk Cousins alongside Allen. Those are, like, the three QBs I'm playing. But um, I think there could be interest in, in Jackson. Uh, you hit on Fields and Mariota. Like, I worry about just these both these teams running the football a ton. I feel like that's, like, the worry around the industry pretty much. But they both great, so their their weapons all grayed out pretty well, and it's a good game environment. If you want to play these guys, like by all means, we've seen how good Fields has been. Uh, Mariota just doesn't throw. I didn't, Mariota's just an anomaly to me because he. I don't. I don't really understand how he's starting in the NFL right now. Uh, Daniel Jones. He's gonna go up against Detroit. Detroit's given up the most. Uh, Fancy points to uh, opposing QBs. I don't want to play. So there's guys here that would spread out the ownership. I don't want to play Daniel Jones. Russ has is in a pretty good spot for QBs as well at 5'8". Uh, like we kind of hit on at the top of the show versus the Raiders. They're just awful. They're like third, third worst in the league. So, yeah. And then Cousins, that game environment with Minnesota-Dallas, I just think is super interesting just because uh, – there's, it's probably more interesting for cousin for secondary stacks because I just wonder if Cousins can hang with guys like Allen, Hurts, and Jackson, or even Fields for that matter on this slate. But uh, right now I currently have some Cousins. So I don't know. My three favorite, like I said, is Allen, Hurts, and Cousins, and the rest right now I'm not getting to as much. Yeah, so it's a tough matchup. Dallas, you know, Dallas being fourth in DVOA versus the pass, 11th versus the run. Minnesota's been kind of middle of the board, too, from defense, uh, right, you know, dead dead in, in the in the middle for both uh, running and pass. But so this game could break different ways. The thing that's good about this game is that there's elite weapons, right, for each team. You got Justin Jefferson, you got Dalvin Cook, you've got Tony Pollard, whatever you think about Zeke and you've got C.D. Lamb, right? And these guys, like, like it's easy to make. Like, you know who you're stacking Kirk Cousins with, right? Like, although you could play some Hawkinson. Hawkinson has been seeing elite usage, like almost like Travis Kelsey-like usage um, in a short period. So I think he's an interesting play when we get over to tight ends. But um, this game could break either way for me. Like, it could be a defensive battle. These weapons could – could also go off and, and be good. So the thing that's nice is just, it's like, you know, who you're going to play. Um, you know, you don't have to really 
it's not like Fields versus David Montgomery, which is, you know, you're not going to feel comfortable either, either one, which either one you have, you know, you, they could totally, uh, you, you, you could see it coming like uh, Fields messing up your, your Montgomery shares or vice versa, Montgomery messing up your field shares. Um, but Jalen Hurts bounce back seems pretty interesting to me. And I'll, I'll, I'll echo your sentiment with Daniel Jones. I think he just sucks. And not only is he bad, the, the Giants – so the Giants, um, you know, they, they're just so – they don't do much, right? Like they're, they're, he doesn't have elite playmakers. He's got horrible playmakers, right? They, they, Juan Dale is, is a short – is a, I'm going to short shame him. He's just this tiny little guy who can't really do much. Um they they got rid of Kadarius Tony, who would be their like elite playmaker. He just didn't, you know, fit with the team. Now the Chiefs are benefiting. It's Darius Slayton still, who's the go-to guy for Daniel Jones, and always has been, even when people forget. Kenny Galladay is a corpse out there, like stiff as a board. He looks, um, and so I just, you know, I just don't, I just see them. They're just going to pound Saquon. That's what they're going to do in this game. So it's going to be the path of least resistance against Detroit defense, and that's going to be Saquon. So it's like, what could Daniel Jones break off a big run? You know, he's done it. You know, he had that week seven where he put up 31 fantasy points, but that is is a tough ask, right? Like that is just – that is – you got you, you one fluke week out of him. I mean, it's in him, but it's, it's not probable, right? It's possible but not probable. Um Anyways, so I'm, I don't really like him. I, I do like Joe Burrow a lot. I think that's the spot. I think Boyd and Higgins are still good. I think, you know, Hayden Hurst is a good, interesting tight end play. Um, and, you know, Mixon's going to get a bunch of ownership. And it's there, you know, the Pittsburgh D has just been cr- crushed versus the pass. And they were going heavy, heavy Burrow. Um, before Chase went down, which, you know, is a concern always. And, you know, that plays into why Mixon got so much. But this just seems like the Joe Burrow spot for me when, like, he's going to be lowish owned on this slate. I'm I'm seeing under 5%. It's easy to pair him with Higgins and Boyd. So that's what I'm thinking there. I don't really like any other off-the-board plays. I mean, I wouldn't consider him off the board, but there's no one else I really want. I don't want, like, Jared Goff. I don't – you know, the Giants, that's just going to be a slowish game. I don't want Mac Jones. I don't want Matt Ryan. I don't want Davis Mills. I don't want Derek Carr. I don't want Kenny Pickett. Taylor Heineke, I could be convinced to, but he's not very good. That's just like a low owned play. Um, I don't hate Heineke. I'm, I've always been a Heineke guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, Heineke guy. Never heard of, never heard of Heineke guy before, but you, you can, you can have that. No, not like someone I play. Religion. You can have that title. I'm just saying is like I don't know. I better than there a better chance to win than, than Carson, Carson wins. wins. Yeah. Agree. Um like I don't know how you could look at both of them and be like, all right, why am I playing Wentz week in and week out when he's throwing two pit? Like how would you, they the team just seems to rally around Heineke. Scary Terry football standpoint than Scary actually. Terry was awful when he was being when he had uh, awful he, he completely no, awful. No, he was great against um, against uh, Darius Slay in their last game. With, with Heineke. It's funny, t- Scary Terry, his first year in the league, like we were playing him with like nobody's his QB, and then Carson Wentz comes in, and you think it would be an upgrade, and it was just a complete downgrade. Yeah, he, he's terrible, Carson Wentz. Um, yeah, Heineke would be the low on guy, I think. That's that's the one, because I think, I, think, I think Scary Terry goes off. I like Terry, too. Mariota, I, I don't really – I don't want Mariota. I get it. I just – I want my guy to at least be able to throw a passing touchdown. He needs to – like on the slate, he has to, right? Like there's no – there's too many guy, QBs with ceilings that he has to compete with. So I, I just have no interest. So for me, I think it's Josh Allen, Justin Fields at the It top. really is jo- jo- just Josh Allen. You just yep. – everything's going to be spread out. Just play Allen. Fields is fine. There's a lot of Fields truth is out there. But if everything's going to be sp- spread out and you can get way over on Allen, why not? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play Burrow. Just throwing that out there, too. Um, all right. Let's move it over to wide receiver. All right. We do have some chalk. So we have CD Lamb chalk. Um, first of all, CD Lamb has been awesome this year, even though, at least from like a usage standpoint, air yard standpoint, and all of that. And, you know, to, to even be in play with Cooper Rush is quite an achievement. We've seen now with, with Dak back coming off two straight good games, one massive game with 15 targets in, in his last game against Green Bay. Green Bay, typically a, a good defense against the pass, um, usually struggle more with the run, but uh, he went for 11 catches, 150 50 yards, and two TDs. So Dak back helps him for sure. 31% or no, 30, 39% air yard share, which is crazy. 32.1% um, target share, which is fourth best in the league. Um, eighth best matchup advantage per pro, pro football focus. I always look at for their um, wide receiver matchups. So he's top 10, which is nice. Ninth, he's ninth overall in receiving yards. He's sixth overall in targets. He's eighth overall in receptions. And he's been doing this with Cooper Rush and barely any Dak. So um, I get it. He's chalk. He just seems still like you're getting an elite wide receiver one for 7,500. That's not bad. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting how we tackle that. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be chalky for good reason. Um it's all about volume with that guy playing the Giants 23rd in DVOA versus the pass. When he's healthy, he's had an elite target share, 32% in games that he's been healthy in. Over 10 targets average, 41% um, target share over the last two games. 10th best matchup, so he hits that top 10 spot that I'm always looking for on the pro football focus matchup advantage. Um, so 7,200 seems like, you know, for PPR, which is what we're talking about on DraftKings, seems like a, a really strong play, going to be popular. Stefan, Stefan Diggs, is that who you're pairing Josh Allen with? Just making it easy to Diggs? It's very, right? Like, it's very simple. I think you just play Diggs. I think there's, uh, if I was playing Gabe Davis, I wouldn't be playing Diggs and Davis together. But yeah, I, I think I'm, I'll have some Gabe Davis because I'm not going to play all Diggs, but majority Diggs. So Diggs, second in the league in red zone targets, which stood out to me, second in touchdowns. So, like, you get the massive touchdown equity in a game where we expect him to score a lot of touchdowns in the in the dome. Um, could be a, a nice eruption game for him. He's up there, too, from every, every, uh, every category for the elite wide receivers. He's sixth overall in target share, 31%. Um, he's got the fifth best matchup, top five matchup per pro fo football focus. So yeah, and he's an easy pairing with Josh Allen. It's just tough to build that. So you we get you gotta get I mean let me I'm just gonna pull up quickly just like an optimal what it's showing. So yeah, so when you play Josh Allen and Diggs, it's gonna be spitting out double tight ends for you. So that's something you gotta you gotta consider whether you're comfortable with that. Or you gotta find a cheap uh wide receiver play, which we do have some. We'll get to in a second. Um, other than that, the wide receiver, um, Scary Terry, he just looks so – I mean, he looked so good in the last game. They're playing Houston, 5,900. I mean, he he's like my favorite wide receiver play on the slate, to be honest with you. I really like McLaurin too. He's just a baller. Like he's – and you're pairing him with Heineke. Like we said, it's not Wentz. It's a really good spot. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like it, at I, that price, he's he's severely mispriced with Heineke. You don't have to pair him with Heineke, but you know, yeah, like so. You're, I'm just saying in the context of their team, right? Like it's not Wentz. Yeah. Um, and you know, showed what he can do in the last game, twenty in, the, in a really tough matchup. He had 128 yards, um, eight reception, eleven targets. Now. Um, he has been lacking. He only he's got two touchdowns on the season. But you know, you keep feeding this guy eleven targets, and the offense is playing better. They're also in a really strong matchup. I mean, we're talking about a really game when he was shadowed by by uh, Slay, and now he's going to Houston. So like this, this should be a really strong spot. 
5,900 is an absolute steal. So like, I like him, like he's like my go-to. So I make my stack and then he's my, my not, you know, he's my go-to like for the next guy. Cause he's just, he's just cheap enough. Um, Justin Jefferson going to be tough to play him at 9,100 on this slate. I think so too. That's why it like makes me second guess cousins a little bit. Still projects for a lot of ownership too. Yeah, he's probably not the young. best tournament play for that reason. Yeah, but he, he is elite, you know. Wouldn't you rather just pay up for Barkley in that instance, though? Probably. I mean, the thing is with Jefferson, so he's first in red zone targets in the league. He's second in targets, fourth in receptions, second in receiving yards, and he's an absolute freaking baller, right? So, like, if he goes off, even in a tough matchup, you're not going to be shocked. You're just going to be pissed that I you came in underweight on him, you know? Um, but I think that's the right – I think it's the right thing to do to be underweight on him and to play some of these other guys versus his savings, especially if you're going Josh Allen, you have to. Um, T. Higgins, I think, great spot. Um, I, I like him a lot. I also think you can play Tyler Boyd. Um, Devontae Adams, you know, two smash games back-to-back, -back, right, when they need them. They've, they've uh, lost each of those games, but they were competitive at least after when they got smoked by New Orleans and did nothing 24-0. At least they were competitive the last two. They should have won each of them. Um, they didn't. But uh, And he's got that little that real red tag where he's been limited all week in practice with his abdomen. But that just may bring his ownership down in general. And, yes, Denver's a tough matchup, but, like, this guy's an elite receiver. He's not going to be owned, and but the, the – like – I don't know if he's playing. I just my move would just be to play Jacobs more. All right. Um, what do you think about Jacoby Myers? So, like, the slot is always the place to play against the Jets. I like and Myers. I think Bourne and Thornton have playability in like 150 max too, for what it's worth, because they're opposite. Um, they're opposite Sauce Gardner. Parker's going to see Gardner, it looks like. Uh, but, and yeah, like, Myers would definitely be my – I think Myers is a very good play on the slate. And in week eight, it was in that game where we're running it back this week, it was just all Ramondre and Jacoby Myers. Myers got 12 targets, nine receptions in that game, did get a touchdown, only 60 yards, so they were playing, like, the short slot connections. Um, Myers is – I feel like Myers is more – you're more able to play Myers with Stevenson than Parker, who's – very touchdown dependent anyways right yep um and i also like garrett wilson for cheap 4900 he had a smash game against them uh, new england Corey davis still out um two solid games back to back for the price um i think the patch d is overrated personally um so 4,900, I'm on board there for if you need, like, a guy in that le level. Like, I definitely like Terry. I would prioritize and try to get to Terry McLaurin. But uh, right below him, I like Myers. And then right below him, I like uh, Garrett Wilson. Um, Darnell Mooney is interesting, right? Like, uh, against Atlanta. Any interest for you there? Like, to just play him? I, both, of, both Mooney and Garrett Wilson I have a ton of interest in. It's a good. It's a really good matchup for Mooney versus Atlanta. He's leverage off Montgomery. Uh, I like Montgomery personally, but if you're trying to make that route and GBPs work, I think that that that, that that's fine. Um, and then Garrett Wilson, like you said, at 4900 versus the Pats, I think he's a very strong play. And he's like a. He's not leverage off of Justin Fields, but like for. If, there, there's a there's a scenario where Fields has just like an average game, doesn't use his legs a ton, and Mar Mooney has a good game and gets at least yeah. a touchdown and stuff, a bunch of targets, and you don't have to have Fields, right? Because that's – yeah, so that was pretty much – like if – with Fields being priced up now, like he's in the range of Hurts, he's in the range of Allen. So, yeah, I think that's definitely feasible. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the – people are going down to Paris Campbell. He's fine with Ryan. Like, I think Ryan definitely helps him rather than Ellinger, so that's, like, nice to see. He is chalk at the wide receiver position, where I think that wide receiver throughout the year has proven to be the most volatile position. 
Uh, and it's not I'm, like he's it's not like he's he's an, a non volatile player. It's not like he's an elite guy or anything. No, yeah, I think you could I think you can make the fade uh, if you feel like that's what you want to do. Um, Philly is obviously a good pass defense. Uh, I I personally like Pittman a good bit, so I'll probably be underweight on Campbell. Yeah, I like Pittman better. Pittman seems uh, like a very strong play. If if everyone's gonna go to Taylor, like just the way I'm thinking about it, I think I kind of prefer Kamara. Um, I I think Pittman for his price is very interesting. Not like he's McLaurin's obviously better at five nine, but it's just he's gonna go. Pittman's gonna be significantly overlooked. I feel like. Um, or get squeezed. Yeah. What about uh, Sk- pronounce Skoranek? Is that how you pronounce him? Ben Skoranek. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the is he is he the number one guy? He so, I guess. Yeah. Seven guess. seven targets last week. For 14 yards. <laughs> this is what be, this to me is like what makes Kamara like such a like why I want to play some Kamara. Like they don't have you're taking cup out, like they're gonna get absolutely annihilated. Kamara can go for two TDs here easy. All right. Um I'm gonna make I like Darius Slayton. Yeah, so but don't play Daniel Jones. I know that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So you had, by Jones. the way, last week, in great call on Slayton. Great call on Slayton. Well, I I just think he's always the number. People he don't seems think like of him. he is. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm. He's I'm Daniel Jones's number one option. It's who he feels safety with. Like people like stuck in like Kenny Galladay. He's five uh, K. Yeah. Like I feel like it's oh you it's, can play him versus pass defense even though it's a it's a tick up in price, right? Like you get this defense, it's warranted. And I don't mind going back to him because you're right. He is getting the volume. So, well, they don't do a ton of volume, but he's at least like, he's like the, the guy, guy that he's the guy. Yeah. And like, he does have big playability and it is the nut matchup and it's leverage off Saquon and it's, he's going to be low owned. So it's like, would it shock you if he catches a 40 yard touchdown a little bit because it's Daniel Jones, but not really right. Like, um, and he could certainly be, have a good game. So, like, that stands out as, like, a strong tournament play for me. Same game. Do you have hesitancy with Amon St. Brown? A little bit. Because the Giants games are just disgusting. They're like, awful. Slop, they're, they're slop they're, fest. They're it's awful. Like, and then you have these dome games that have good plays in them. Yeah. But does he so get I, squeezed for that reason, too, at so, the same time? I, I mean, Amon Ra is going to be chalk. Yeah. And so I think I, it's not – I don't really – I don't really want – like I'm fine fading that in this game. And I'm uh, like I, I want I, I want like the – I want the cheaper upside plays that enable me to just fill out a good lineup with like Josh Allen and whatever. Higgins so is like, right under Amonra. So for you, like if you like Burrow, it just makes so much more sense to play Burrow Higgins. Yep. But like, let's talk about like Donovan Peoples Jones is another another going to be popular bring back. But like this guy's clear number two. Like he's gotten probably more usage than Amari Cooper as of late. Had nine targets last week, ninety nine yards, no pay dirt. Right? Like he's hasn't. He I don't think he hasn't had a touchdown all season. He's going um, to it's like that regret. What's he, he's that's going to come eventually, right? Should I so we didn't hit on like Chubb and Hunt? I think like they're obviously not going to project well, but the game environment should be pretty relatively strong, right? Versus the Bills. Um, I think in Joku for me, like we'll get in a tight end, he'd probably be the best bring back, but um, DPJ, yeah, I, I don't hate DPJ. Like, I don't think I think you should be if you're in on Allen, you should be trying to make some of these Browns guys work. So another another so I'm kind of like focused on this cheap range because like they enable I'm trying to find cheap plays that I like. So because I want to do like the the Josh Allen to digs, right? So like we're looking at Donovan Peoples Jones, we're looking at Scary Terry, I can fit in there. I'm looking at Jacoby Myers, I can fit in there, Darius Slayton, I can fit in there. Um, another cheap play that's gonna get some love here is Kendall Hinton, which 
I don't know. Like if he if he breaks if he if he crushes, like God help me. But you know, with Judy hurt and uh, he he had a good game last week. He got five targets, four receptions, sixty two yards. There's been other plays where they've missed him. Um, he is a little bit banged up and is like technically questionable, but I think he's going to play. But um, he's the clear wide receiver too after Cortland Sutton. Russ sucks, but he's a $3,600 wide receiver, too, in a good matchup. Yeah, I mean, the Hinton Hinton call, I think, is fine. Like, you just worry about the injury, the fact that he's a rookie. I don't know. Like, yeah, he's fine. He's going to hit optimals. Um, I like Amari Cooper. I love Amari Cooper. I mean, that would be – if I could make it work, the – out. Let's see. Let's see. Amari Cooper away games. Do you have issues with that narrative? Oh no, I don't give a, I don't give a shit. Um, Josh Allen. I mean, it's in a dome. He's a great route runner. Yeah, that's a good point. Double. It's all double tight end. Let's see if I don't do double tight end. Let's see what it looks like. Um. You got to play these. So, like, I mean, I do kind of like this lineup. It's just optimal. But you got to – it's in order to make, like, a Diggs, Amari Cooper work, it's going to be a lot of chalk in there. That's what they're going to do. So you're going to have to play, like, a Kendall Hinton that's filling in there. Paris Campbell is coming in there. Um, a cheaper tight end, whether it's Higby, D- Schultz. Actually, that's kind of the high end this week. But Dolchich, um, tight end. Nico Collins is getting spit out. Uh, Skoranek. So there's, you got to get comfortable with these cheap guys in order to make something like that work. That's going to be the key to the slate. Which, 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 which of these cheap guys enable this? In my opinion, I think so. We didn't hit on like Kendrick Bourne at thirty six hundred. Like you're putting sauce on that side. You love Bourne. You're the Bourne. The Bourne. I like Bourne a little bit. Yeah, I do like Bourne. I like Thornton as well. Like these are guys that you can. Get oh, I played them and got nothing out of them. What about Noah Brown? Do we have any Noah Brown love? I don't hate Noah Brown. That's a really is good Gallup one. out. What? Is Gallup out. He's but the issue is like even if Gallup's out, like he's still. He's no still, Gallup's in. All right. I I still think it's fine for this slate. Just if you're trying to make something work, like you've seen seventy six percent of the snap slot snaps last week. So is Gallup ever going to do anything? Probably not. <laughs> like Brown's good, and so I don't know. Yeah, I could, I could. I mean, I could see it. All right. So it my is, it my, is very difficult with this like dig stack because yeah, it's expensive. It's very yeah. Expensive. My my takeaway is is you got to find these cheap guys. So you got to you got to plow. You got to got to get comfortable with Garrett Wilson, Jacoby Myers. Like that range, those like guys are fine plays though. Fifty nine hundred down. Let's see what we can do. What's the, what's the cheapest we can go at tight end? Let's move it on over to tight end because we've kind of exhausted the running uh, wide receivers. But that's where I'm looking is like how can I how can I make this lineup work? And so I'm gonna have to pick my favorite cheaper guys. But I, I want save the chalk. What's the cheapest value? Oh no, probably Logan Thomas. Yeah, I know. That's why I just saw that, and like, the guy's been as stiff as a board and has done absolutely nothing. Uh, he, if he just could be well, he has rib. Has been battling his rib injury, but okay. So latest on him, he's cleared from the week eleven injury report, so he's not on the injury report. So that's a good sign. Did have four targets last game, only two receptions. Didn't look good. Tough matchup against Philly. Much better matchup this time. I can do it. I can dig it. Um, yeah, we can. Oh, oh my He's god, good. I can play. I can play Jack Stoll. Stoll Goddard. is very, in, very much in play. Yeah, you're taking Goddard out. Yeah, and he this guy got got um has seen a little bit of work every now and then in like a tight situation and had a couple of had a target, a couple of targets here and there. Um, it's all Goddard versus a dot is very like intermediary in it, like it's it's it, he's throwing like very well it's an back. offense that the tight end is a, is an important part of yeah and Goddard's out and uh it's I in a dome. It, he immediately I think, gets boost 
Dude, I can play. I can play Stoll. Hold on. Yeah, I like Stoll. I think that's a good call. Well, that it does kind of open up stuff. So you can play like the cheaper end of the higher running back. The cheaper end of like like you could play like Montgomery. You could play Pierce. You can play. You can do a stack with Diggs. Let me see if I can get. It's probably going to be Donovan Peoples or Amari as the bring back. If I do Donovan Peoples, you can still play even like CD Lamb or Amon Ra. You can play like let's see if I put uh, one second Diggs. Now let's put let's see if I can get Scary Terry in there. It's a different show. We're just building lineups this week. We don't have JSU. We're just shooting the shit. Um, I actually like this kind of format. So, okay, Josh Allen to Diggs. Bring it back with Donovan Peoples-Jones. Oh, no. I don't have – why is Diggs not in there? Yeah, he is in there. Um, I can still play Scary Terry. I can still play Montgomery and Josh Jacobs as my two running backs. I can play Paris Campbell. I don't want to play Paris Campbell, but I can play him. But so that that lineup is completely doable. Um, let's see what else I can get. You can play like Pierce and Ramondre, um, and get us you know play your Donovan Peoples Jones. Have Scary Terry, who I think is a phenomenal play and could be priced much higher. So I think there's a good good upside with that play, and you could still get Ceedee Lamb in this lineup. Um, no, oh. you're not. You got no, no, Josh Allen. I don't know. These are the kind of these are the plays. These are the these are the lineup builds that I'm I'm thinking about with like guys like Garrett Wilson, Scary Terry. Um, because to me, Gar Garrett Wilson's a wide receiver one. Um, to me. So yeah, I I I like Wilson. I like the like I don't mind. I'm comfortable with Mooney Myers, and going all for that matter. So. So I'm saying so. I'm preaching this week, go as low as you can, possibly can at tight end to get the savings because you need it. Play yeah. Jack Stoll. That's my that's my takeaway. Um, other than Jack Stoll, what are you thinking at tight end? Yeah, like Dolcich is obviously going to stand out when you take out Judy. He only had one target last week, uh, but I think he's fine. He's going to be chalky, so what? Like it, if Kendall Hinton doesn't play, then like you pretty much – He's just fine. He's a good play. Andrews is going to be low owned. He's going to get squeezed. People aren't going to play Andrews. Getting to Andrews in situations like this, I think, works a lot of the time. So I don't mind that. Uh, Pitts correlates well with Mariota. They just have no chemistry at all. Uh, Hawkinson, like you said, like Hawkinson seeing like Kelsey like usage versus Dallas. I don't mind him. Hayden Hurst, you hit on in Burroughs. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, and Joku, I think he's fine as a run back. He's at 3-9 in these Allen stacks. I don't mind that. Um, you hit on Thomas and Stoll. I think those guys are good plays. All right. Um, my my favorite play? Who and is I, it? And, I, and I've been saying this like every week and then not playing him, is Cole Komet. He's finally, like, with that offense humming, like, they're going deep to him on big plays. Um, they're, uh, Atlanta has hemorrhaged. Uh, so are you playing plays. fields? Because you like Mooney, you like Kamat? Yeah. But the thing that scares me with I, – I, I will play some fields. But the thing that scares me with fields, like, the thing I don't care – like, he's 7,600 now, so I can get away with playing Kamat. I can get away with playing Mooney and them having good games. And, like, the thing – he's only going to break me if he goes off running, if he does his freaking running again. So if you, you just got to hope that that doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. Or trust that it doesn't happen, that it was an anomaly that he went absolutely berserk the last two weeks. So I think you still can play him. Now, do I like the idea of playing fields, Komet and Mooney? That's a cheap, cheap uh, double stack right there, but uh, definitely hedge it with some Montgomery when you don't play him. But um, yeah, I have. I mean, I'm really just trying to get my Josh Allen build is what I'm really trying to do. But I, I like Cole Komet. I mean, two touchdowns, two touchdowns, one touchdown. He's finally scoring. They're finally using him. Seven targets, six targets last week. Um, another great game environment, and they 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 hemorrhage big plays. So Cole Komet's in play for me. 
Yeah, I don't hate it. Uh, makes me worry that you like him because I'm, once again, not playing fields. So this will probably be like the – He'll have a 400, 400 yards passing. And him and Mooney go off again. I'm he won't rush. Those. He'll just have like five uh, five passing touchdowns. And... <laughs> um, I mean, he still is not a great passer. I mean, that you have we. I have to acknowledge that he's super. He's been super efficient. It can't continue. One would think. Um, all right, Hayden Hurst, good play. That's that's it. So now that brings us to the Bobby Gomes. DFS defensive segment. Take it away, Bobby. Yeah, the D's. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like cheap defense this week. I I like the Steelers look like they're going to be chalk now. I like them versus Burrow. You do not. You like Burrow, so you're on the other side of that. Yeah, but um, I'll play any cheap D, so. Yeah. They have um, the big D-line mismatch. Like the Saints at 3K, I think they're fine. Like You're taking Cup out of that offense. Like, you just – I think he correlates well with Kamara. Uh, I, th I think they correlate well with Kamara, and yeah, I'd probably go the Saints at three K. Okay. Skaronic's the best receiver. I like the I like Washington. Uh, I like yeah, the Washington I, call too versus Pierce, dude. Yeah, versus Pierce Chop and, Pierce, and like, Davis Mills. That's a really good call. And Davis Mills stinks. He doesn't stink. They stink. I mean, the whole the whole team stinks. Yeah. Uh, I like. I think Washington's a very good leverage defense. Even the Jets, like twenty eight hundred for the Jets. No one's going to play the Jets. Are the Jets at home? Yeah. No, it's in New England. Oh, it's in New England. I'd, I'd probably prefer Washington then. Let me uh, double check that. Yeah, they're at New England. Um. Yeah. All right. That's the defense. Give us, give me your your favorite stack. Single entry. That's the Bills. Yeah, I'm with Playing you. Playing the shot. If we want to get get crazy, what's your uh, what's your crazy one? Uh probably Cousins, I guess. I, I'm not going to end up – I'm just going with the – I think you made a really good point at the top of the show, and if it's something people take away, it'd be this. Like, the ownership at QB is going to be spread out to a point where, like, if you can get as much Josh Allen as possible, get as much Josh Allen as possible. All right, my crazy one is Heineke. Heineke to McLaurin. And Thomas. Um. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Curtis Maybe. Samuel. Samuel's in, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just think that in this matchup, upside of Terry with uh, McLaurin at 5,900 is just insane. Yep. All right. We did it without JSU. Sorry that uh, he's not on the show. Everyone who's listening was expecting him. Uh, but uh, he will be back next week. Um, if you are playing this UFC slate today, if you're betting, take a uh, bet on Miles John. And Kennedy Nicheku, uh for all the the, the uh, UFC. That's that's where my money is anyway. Um, all right, this is thank you, Bobby. It's been the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast Week Eleven Edition, and we'll be back with JSU next week for Week Twelve.